I can't keep myself. He's a good, good father. That's who he is. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. I told you it's a little different today. Actually, the verse that I'm getting ready to bring you to, you'll read it at the very end of this sermon. And we'll catch up together at the very end of this sermon at Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 24 and 25. Amen. Many of you look at that verse and you've heard it many times. God began to speak to me and he began to show me things and he started showing me that the enemy was trying to stop the flow. Stop the flow of God. Stop the flow of God's children. Stop the flow in my life and stop the flow in your life. Understand it always comes from the head down. God will always show you. Son, you're under attack. You're under attack from every side. It's amazing how God, the very first word in the Bible, David, God mentioned water. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. How many of you are familiar with it? Come on. It said the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the water. Ain't it awesome how you found the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Now, how can you say that, Pastor? Because Jesus said, You've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen the Father, you've seen me. That's three and one. Come on, somebody. Amen. They were hovering over the water. And God began to show me verses and begin to show me things. And I don't know how God does in your life, but God never tells me, Jason, this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> Kenny, he never says A, B, C, D, E, F. He never does that to me. Right. He does that to you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Right. He says, Jason, A, B, and then he gets quiet. And I say, Lord, we'll see it. He said, we walk by faith. And I'm like, Lord, I just want to know the way. He says, you know me, don't you? I am the way. I am the truth and I am the light. And you follow my ways. God began to speak to me about water over and over again. Jesus said it like this. He said, I am the living water. In John 7, 37, it says this. It says, let anyone who is thirsty come, on. come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Did you know you had living water in you? Living flowing water, the Bible says. There's a difference in water that flows. If you remember the Israelites, when they crossed over the Red Sea, the Bible says that the water split. Listen to me. And God took the children to the other side. He only stopped the flow of the water to take his children from one side to the other. But you need to hear me and hear me well. When you stop the flow in your life, the enemy can cross. It's the flow of the living water that drowns the enemy. Come on, somebody. I can sit down. I just gave you revelation. Some of you right now, the enemy's trying to stop your flow. You're depressed. You feel busted and disgusted. Hell's done broke loose. I've heard of more suicides, death, overdoses this week than I've heard in a long time. And I'm like, God, why don't you show up and smack that devil in the mouth? I'm sick and tired of him touching your people. God said, rise up. And I said, I thought I was. Jeremy Brown told me right before this service, sometimes a man makes his plans. But the Lord direct steps and sometimes we're wise in our own eyes and we think we got things going and we're blind to the enemy and the enemy is at work I want to hear I want you to hear me today God is going to give revelation in this building it is up to you how you receive it if you receive this bread that God gives you today my God you will run through mountains listen to me strongholds will break in your life every stronghold has held you back God is about to break it if you can believe it today you'll receive it today the Bible says you receive not because you ask not. Right now you should just stop and say, God, whatever that preacher's got that you gave him, give it to me. And if he don't got something for me, give him something to give to me. Come on. 
God's in this house. He said, he said, rivers of living water will flow from within. I want you to ask yourself right now one question. Has the enemy stopped your flow? Has the enemy stopped your flow? Mm. I told you before that God often, well, all the time, he ain't often, he always does me like this. Shows me things in parts. And often, Jr. when he shows me things in parts, I don't even catch it, Nikki, till later. David, I'm like, the writing was on the wall. Why didn't I see it? Anybody else? Hallelujah. A few weeks ago, I got a call, and it's going to make sense in just a minute. Got a call from my little cousin, Caleb. He ain't really little. He's got even big muscles than me, but he's always my baby cousin regardless. And he called me, and he said, God has spoke to me. There's a flood coming, brother. And you talk to a preacher like that with a hallelujah, fill the church up. The sinners are getting saved. <laughs> Come on, that's what we wanted to hear. And he said, he goes on and he's he's on the phone. You just have to know Caleb. And he's telling me, he said, brother, I'm telling you, the Lord has told me a flood is coming. Get ready. And in the middle of him getting loud and crazy like he does, and then he turned around and said, my gracious, look at there, there's a beaver. <laughs> he said, I told you, you can't make this stuff. There's a beaver. He sends the picture of the beaver to me. Watch. This is how the Lord does. Caleb, listen to this, son. I begin to see beavers everywhere. Since I've been riding down the road and there comes a beaver across the road. I'm stopping taking pictures with me and the beaver. Sending it to Caleb. Caleb, you know what I'm talking about? I said, Lord, it's a flood coming. Hallelujah. And I'm taking pictures of every beaver that's in here. It seems like every time I turn around, Kevin, there's a beaver crossing the road, standing on the side of the road. They're everywhere. And, I, and I'm going, man, God is about to do something. Can I tell you the enemy is crafty? Can I tell you today, God shows us things in parts. And often our mind tries to recreate what God is trying to show us. We try to make sense of what God's doing. And I look and I say, Lord, there's beavers. Whoa, he's about to fill the pond up. Yeah. And I was sitting there in the middle of warfare, all hell breaking loose. I was so busy, I didn't have time for junk. You ever been so busy, you ain't got time for that? Come on. I was so busy trying to get my house fixed up, trying to get an investment that I had poured everything into and all hell broke loose in it. And I'm trying everything I can to get ahead. And I'm going, God, where are you at in the middle of this? And it seemed like the flow of God stopped. And I couldn't understand, David. We seem to be this. You gave us this time. I was laying down and God began to speak to me and he took me back to a vision I was coming out of the woods hunting I was at my uncle's house in uh, Bullets Creek I had hunted all day long and I didn't see nothing but a beaver I was hunting beside this old fishing pond Kenny and I was trying to catch old deer get him a drink the deer never came, but the beavers came. I got up to the top of the house, and it's just, this happened two or three years ago. And I get up to the top of the house, and there's my cousin Ray, and he comes through there, and he said, did you kill anything today? I said, no, I didn't see no deer. All I seen was a dumb beaver. He said, you've seen that beaver? Because see what you got to understand, a farmer hates a beaver. Come on. I was blind. I said, yeah, I seen him. He said, you shoot him? I said, Lord, no, I didn't shoot him. I'm a deer hunting. I wasn't beaver hunting. <laughs> and he said, if you want to hunt down here, 
you ever see that beaver again and you don't shoot him, you'll never hunt down here again. He said, that beaver has caused me more problems than you understand. That beaver stopped the water from flowing in my pond. He said, it downed it all the way shut. And as the water kept building in this slow running creek, it built up until it bursted. And when it bursted into the pond, I had no idea all this. And my cousin began to tell me that it pushed all of the water out of the pond, which pushed tons of his fish out on dry land to die. And I just shook it off. I was like, well, it's not like he got a beaver problem. I was trying to kill a deer. <laughs> and I just went on about my business. Need the whole three years later, Caleb would call me and tell me about beavers. And God the whole time was trying to show me something. And I thought the beaver was our friend. See, a beaver stops up the flow of God. His number one instinct of a beaver is to stop the flow. He don't want flow coming in. So he stops it up so he's got the fish in a barrel. And what happens when he stops up the pond? I'm taking you somewhere. Stay with me. And as he stops this pond up, something happens to the fish that Pastor David definitely does not like. It's called, they stunt the fish's growth. Because the flow of the water puts more oxygen in the pond. It sends more, more live bait down the stream to feed the fish. And when you stop the flow, you stop the food, you stop the bread, you stop the flow. Now they can't even grow. They're stagnated. They're stunted. Good gracious what you can learn from God's animals. The writing was all over the wall, but I just couldn't see it. I was too busy taking pictures with them. I was too busy entertaining them. I was too busy wanting my picture with the beaver. I'm going to tell you like my brother Brian Trejo always tells me. Sin ain't your girlfriend. You break up with her. God has a flow of living water that flows through your veins. And if you cut that flow off, you cut God off. So God began to speak to me and show me different things in the middle of this warfare. As I told you at the time, I was at an all-time business. And it was a tactic of the enemy to get me busy. And I thought that the blessing had fell from heaven. It was a distraction. It was a distraction to keep me off of him. It was a distraction to keep me busy. So the enemy at the time was keeping me busy and the whole time he's stopping the flow that God was doing in my life. And right now, many of you right now, God is speaking to you because God has plans for you, a future for you, a hope for you. He knows what he has for you. He said, I made you in my image. I don't make mistakes. I don't make trash. They lied to you. You're my child. And, I, and, I, and son, I got, to, I got to be the living water that's flowing through your veins. But the, the thing is, I got to flow. If anything that you allow to stop, it'll stop the flow. And it'll stunt your growth. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. That's good. How many of you have been experiencing spiritual warfare? Let me see some hands in this place. Well, I'm glad he gave a couple of y'all a day off. <laughs> You know, it says when it rains, it pours. But if you've ever been in a yard and the rain is pouring and if that, that water is not flowing away from a house, it causes damage. Yes. Yes. When the water is flowing, butch, it needs to flow away. When the, water, when the water builds up, it begins to drown. It begins to drown the grass. It begins to kill everything around it because too much water. It has to keep flowing. Mm. as God showed me this vision and I began to just think about a lot about beavers and I said God so this, this is going to be the craziest sermon I probably ever preached <laughs> come on 
God wanted me to show you a few things that may be stopping your flow. Number one, as I said, busyness will stop your flow. If you're so busy that you can't catch up, the enemy's got you where he wants you. Absolutely. I'll show you what it looks like. When you're so busy, you forget to make a date night with your wife. Come on. When you're so busy, you forget her birthday. Come on. When you're so busy, you forget to make time for your kids. That's right. Oh, don't look at me so holy. That's right. We get there. We get so busy trying to run around and do everything. Well, God gave it to me. God doing it. God, you, you better stop sometime and just talk to him and make sure that's what he's talking about. That's right. Amen? Amen? Business got me so busy that I didn't even see the enemy when he had surrounded me. Business got me so busy that I, I forgot to take time for the things that really mattered to me. I ain't going to start on the overtime today, Jeremy. <laughs> Come on. I ain't going to bother you today. I'm going to leave you alone. Tell somebody, ain't nobody got time for that. The busy beaver. I bet you I got a couple busy beavers in this house. The busy beaver will always neglect relationship that God has put in his life or her life. A busy beaver will forget to stop and take time for a friend. A busy beaver will forget to take time to run into the ditch to pull one out. That's right. A busy beaver will forget to take time to say, God, thank you for delivering me. Yes. A busy beaver will forget to stop and take inventory where God had brought him from. Right. Listen to me in this church. Come on. Business ain't always good. And I've heard people say, you know, I got to stay busy. I got to stay busy. Now the enemy will get you busy. You'll be like, Mary, Mary, come on, somebody. Yeah. And all you had to do is just lay at his feet. That's all he's looking for. Amen. The second thing God began to show me that works hand in hand with the busy beaver is the distracted beaver. Come on. He got you so busy that he got you distracted on the things that matter. And you forget the relationships and to mend them and to show the love and to cherish how much you cherish the loved ones that you got. You forget to tell your wife, hey, I love you. Forget to tell your kids, let me take a day with you. Let's take a day of fishing. Let's go here. Let's go do that because you're so busy. Now the enemy has you distracted. Now you got two beavers on you. See, the enemy works in pairs. Stay with me. We're about to learn something today. We're about to reveal the enemy today because his secret is out. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you a couple things and we're going to get into this. The third thing he showed me was partial submission. The third thing that will stop the flow of God is partial submission. It is the number one hindrance. It is the number one thing that will stop your growth. Halfway in, halfway out. Where I come from, we call them halfway crooks. God ain't got a place for halfway Christians. He ain't got a place... He don't have it. 99% God. He said, I want all of it. I don't want none of it. I'm either God of all or God of none. Good gracious Lord, give me the words. Am I preaching good in this place? Amen. Partial submission will stop your growth and stop the flow. Partial submission sounds like this, children of God. Listen to me. And I've been guilty of all these sins. That's where I know where they come from. Partial submission sounds like this. Jeremy, I'm better than I used to be. Come on. Mm -hmm. What I just said, Brian, was I settled. Mm -hmm. Come on. I ain't doing heroin no more. Come on. Yeah. Go ahead now. Still got bad thoughts. Still got hatred in my heart. Still got ang still got angry. Still unforgiving. Said to people I forgive, didn't forgive. Come Come on. On. That's partial submission. Right. God don't work in partiality. Partial submission sounds like this. Well, we all got to have something. Come on. I done gave up the drug. There it is. I done had a drink. Now nah, you just substituted one for the other. You gave one demon up and moved into bed with another. I've been guilty of all this, so hear me, hear me well. God come in this place today to set everybody free. He came to set the captives free today. The oil is in the house. Come on. The oil is in this house. Partial submission sounds like this. 
I stopped getting high, but I just started drinking. I stopped taking the pills, but you know, you know, the legal marijuana is legal now. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I don't smoke the cigarettes no more, so I smoke the bait. It's called partial submission. You know, I love her. I ain't married yet, but you know things happen. Got quiet, hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Listen to what God says about partial submission. I started looking. I said, God, show me what partial submission is through your word. Amen. Listen to it. First John 3, 8, he says this. This is a hard sermon to preach. He said, whoever practices sinning is of the devil. That's right. Come on. Jesus says again in 844, John, he says it here. He says, you are of your father, the devil. Your will is the will of your father's desire. Do you know fleshly desires? Yes. Everybody hear me, hear me well. We all got them. Yes. Paul said, I wake up every morning and I got to crucify myself every day. Yes. Come on. Paul understood there's an enemy live and well. He understood there's an enemy that knows exactly what I like. Why do you think girls showed up and dope showed up the day that I was released from prison? Come out of a prison cell free walking with Jesus. Who the sun sets free, Katie, is free indeed. That's right. And at the front door, as soon as they open the bars, there it's set. I'll give you a ride. Where you gonna give me a ride to? I didn't need a ride. I don't know where I'm at. I just come out. I don't even know how I got here. You're not coming a bus and they didn't let me see and <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, I'm not even sure what part of Florida I'm in. Well, you're down here in West Palm Beach, and that's where, hallelujah, that's where I'm from. You know, I'm good here. I know this place. Uh, can you get me to the Greyhound bus station? I was on my way to that Greyhound bus station, and a girl showed up. And that girl wanted to get me high. And I believe she had a little flirtatious to her as well. I've been locked away for three years. Every temptation that come at my door was standing at it. It was there for one reason and one reason, Wendy. To stop the flow of God because God knew I set you free I'm about to do something in your life son you can't understand what I'm about to do you ain't prisoner 01362 you're not just a felon you're not just trash you're my preacher you're my son and I got plans for you but make no mistake there's an enemy that is after you and I can tell you that I passed many tests but I can tell you I failed many too come on that's right amen Amen. Any preacher stands behind a pulpit and act like he got it all together, run out of that church. Yeah, run. Oh, no, run. Run. They're too afraid to be vulnerable. They're too afraid to show your weakness. They're too afraid that you won't come back to their church because they're supposed to be perfect and holy. No! Jesus is the only one holy. Amen. <laughs> I want somebody to make up their mind right now. I'm about to go beaver hunting. Yeah. Come on, somebody just look up to heaven and say, Lord, I'm going to kill every beaver that's in my life. Kill every beaver beaver. In my life. It, will it will not stop the flow that you have for me. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Better stamp it. Amen. Love you, Lily. <laughs> mm. This is the fourth one, and I saved it for last, and we're going to get into this one real good. This is the ignorant beaver. Come on. The Bible says what about ignorance, Jeremy? They die from the lack of knowledge. They die from the what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Another version says it like this. My children perish from the lack of knowledge. Yep. He said everything's falling apart in your life because you ain't got enough wisdom between your ears. You know how to tear a car apart. You know how to do pictures. You know how to fix this. You know how to fix that. But do you know how to go to war? Come on. Come on. If you don't know how to fight an enemy, he'll wear your butt out. Yes, hear me, hear me well. He took 15 years of my life on heroin. And he was good at his job. Yes. It's when God, it's when the, the lie meets the truth. Oh, man. Then you have to make a decision. Do I want to live this way? Do I want to cut the flow off? Do I want to stunt my growth? Do I want to stop the things that God has for me? Or do I want to flow down the river with God? God knows what he's doing. You hear me, hear me well. There's living water in you. And the devil is trying to plug it up. Because God is trying to float you. Mm. Ignorance. 
Now we in Luke 11, amen? We there? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you have ever, anybody even looked at it yet? Yeah. What I'm going to read, how many raise your hand if you already looked at it? Looked Good. At it. Let's read it together. I'm going to show you how the, the enemy made me ignorant. And I'm going to show you how the enemy has made many of you in this church ignorant. And ignorant ain't a bad thing. It's just that you don't know. It's the what? The lack of who? Come on, somebody back here. Ignorance is because you didn't know. But the Bible says, blessed is the man who don't know. Come on. No, he don't. See? You got to learn this. There are preachers, the Bible says, in the end of time, prophets would rise, lying prophets would rise up. There will be a, a tickling of the ears. They'll tell you what you want to hear. They keep you coming. I don't care about your tithes. It belongs to God. That's right. You want to do? You don't want to tithe to God? Then don't. You cut your own flow off. Right. I did it. Right. Come on. It's true. It is. True. If you don't want the things of God, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to somebody in this church that wants it. That's tired of beavers coming in their life. Tired of the flow being stopped. Tired of getting three half steep steps ahead and then the devil pulling them back four. Today, God is in this building and strongholds break. Amen. Yes. We're not, the Bible says his children are ignorant of the devices of the enemy. You know every device of your own enemy. You know where they live. Come on, y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all know where they live. Y'all know their sister, brother, know what time they get out of work. You was plotting bad things. You don't want to talk to me. Oh, baby, it's just pastor. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Then that. And the Bible says this. Listen to what it says. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking what? Rest. Rest. Okay, listen, sir. And finding none, he says, I will return to my house. Hold up. Wait a minute. The enemy just said, I'm going to return back home. The enemy's ever been up on you. And you've been blood bought. That is not his home. That's right. That's right. Listen real close church. Because the enemy has used this verse. To deceive the church. He's used this verse. And even made me ignorant butch. Because I heard a mighty man of God. Preach this long time ago. A great Deliverer delivers. I've seen him lay hands and devils flee. And he read this verse to me. How many of you are familiar with this? Now, can I take inventory and be real with me in this church? Listen. Unclean spirit goes out of the man. He goes through dry places seeking rest. And he finds none. He says, I will return to my house in which I came. Verse 25. And when he comes, he finds it swept and in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And he enters the dwelling there. And the last state of that man was worse than the other. Yeah. How many of you have heard this? Yeah. Come on. Now, I'm going to ask the question. And I want you to be honest with me. But I'm going to prove what I got to say to you by the word of God. Mm -hmm. I heard a message preach and the preacher said this. He said, Pastor. You got to understand something. You can't always bind up people, get them saved and get them set free if they ain't ready. Listen to me. He said, you can't always bind them up and set them free if they ain't ready. He said, because once they get saved, they're talking about a saved man here, preacher. He said, when they get saved, he said, and if they ain't ready, they ain't equipped. That devil's coming back and he's got seven more and he's going to uproot that house. How many of you heard that before? Can I see some hands? They lied to you. They lied to us. It was ignorance. Because we listened. We listened. Listen. I'm going to prove you biblically that is a bold-faced lie. I'm going to prove to you biblically that God ain't talking about a saved man right here. He's talking about a man that cleaned his house up, that wanted to get a good behavior, that he was tired of living in junk, that he thought he didn't read a self-help book. Yeah, I didn't read a self-help book. I'm tired of living like this. I got to do better. He starts sweeping his house up. He starts cleaning it. And the enemy only likes filth. 
He only likes nastiness. He only likes perversion. And, you, and a person makes up their mind, but without Jesus, you can't do nothing. That's right. This guy's doing it on his own. There he is. Listen to it. He said he, t he goes out and he takes seven more wicked devils, more wicked than the first one, and they come back and go back home. Because the house is swept, Tiny. You thought you had it gone, huh? See, the devil loves to show up in your life and uproot it. The devil loves when you start getting ahead and come and tear it apart. The devil loves to see you take two steps forward just to snatch you back. We're going to put an end to him today, Miss Little. Good gracious Almighty. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm so far ahead of myself. Hmm. Done. Now, I want you to go right back to the verse 24, and I'm going to prove this to you. Look at verse 24. It says, when the unclean spirit goes out of the man. Stop right there. Did it say that the spirit was casted out? It said it went out. It says, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest. When he goes out. It never said he was casted out. Hold on, Pastor. What, that might have meant that. No, no. Jesus don't make mistakes. And I'll show you. Look at verse 14 right there. 11, 14. Look at 11, 14. And Jesus was casting out demons. There it is. And Jesus was casting out demons and it was mute. So it was when the demons had gone out that the mute spirit you're seeing it now. Jesus made it real clear. There's a time when an enemy would just leave and a person will get rest. Well, I wish you could prove that to me. I'm glad you asked because I will. If you think about King Saul, you remember he had a demon spirit in him. And the Bible says that the only way that he could get relief was call God's man, King David. The yet to be the king. Amen. And he comes and he would play the music to him. And as he played the music, the violin, harp, whatever it was, he's playing this music. And as God's music, see the Bible says that he inhabits the praise of his people. Yeah. Where God's praises is, the devil can't hang out. Right. So now watch. Jesus makes it clear in verse 14 before you ever get to this verse that he said there is a difference in me casting devils out and devils leaving. Because if you remember King Saul, the devil would leave King Saul, but he always returned home. Every time, right? right. Come on. Mm. Good gracious somebody. We were told free people, they ain't ready. You only heard them worse. My Bible reads, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Right. Hear me in this church. It was an attack on the body of Christ that we would not reach down into the ditch. It was an attack on the body of Christ that they wouldn't reach down and pull one out of the Murray muck because we were afraid. Do you hear us? Yeah. What was the devil doing? Fear, the Bible says fear does not come from God. That's right, that's right. So he made the church fearful that they would hurt another brother or sister. Right. Why? Because he knows how to lead your emotions and your feelings. Mm. And the Bible says we don't go by emotions and feelings. We're led by the spirit of a living God. Right. Mm, come on somebody. That's good. <sighs> the enemy attacks you for one reason. He wants to stop your flow. And that's why the enemy came back to this young man. Because he didn't want him to get revelation. He already knew you're not saved. You're starting to get a, a self-help book or something. You're tired of going three steps forward and three steps back. You're getting tired of it. So you decided you're going to do something different. I'm going to sweep the house out. You know what? This uh, whatever is causing me all this, I'm going to get rid of that. But I am going to do this. Partial submission. This man is not a saved man. This man is not delivered. But for the who the Son sets free is free indeed. When God delivers you, you're delivered. Come on. When you're sealed with it, you're sealed with it. Only thing that can take you out of the hands of God, I don't care what any Baptist preacher teaches you. The only thing that can take you out of the hands of God is you. Yep. You. You can't live like hell because you said some prayer and end up in heaven. You 
can't say a sinner's prayer and say, I prayed and I gave it to the Lord 10 years ago, but you live like a lie, a devil. You don't go to heaven. And you know what? I'm more interested in seeing heaven filled up versus this church filled up. Amen. Talking to my pastor the other day, Brian told me, he said, Jason, you preach what God gave you, even if it empties your whole church. Come on. He said, I would rather see your church filled with two people filled with Jesus than a whole church filled with people that's deceived. Yeah, come on. That's right, man. My job is to make heaven crowded. <laughs> That's my job. Hmm. See, the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Yes. Mm -hmm. If he stays all day at your house, how's he going to go get another one? Hmm. If he's always at your house and he's always beating on us, Caleb, how's he messing with Jeremy on the other side of town? Because he ain't omnipresent. He ain't God. Right. Mm -mm. He just sent some beavers in to stop up some stuff. God's here to go beaver hunting. Amen. We're shooting them down today. Praise be to God. You never read that the devil was casted out not one time. You only read that he left. He gave the man temporary relief. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, show me temporary relief. I love when I ask him something, Nikki, then he shows me. I said, show me temporary relief. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Remember I told you about Pharaoh in the beginning? Do you remember the Israelites when God set them free? Yep. And they're set free and they're walking now. We in freedom. Katie, we're free. Who the sun set free? They marching. They walking with this crazy, crazy wild man come out of the wilderness. Yeah, we follow you. We follow you. We follow you, Moses. Yeah, he my leader. He set me free. Moses didn't set you free. God set you free. God got them all the way across there. They're set free. They're done. Set free. But three days later after the relief. Remember how the enemy shows up? He don't come with one, two, three. He come back with seven. Pharaoh didn't come by himself. He came with the whole army. Come on. Pharaoh showed up and he came with all his homeboys. And they came to take back what belonged to them. They came back to take it captive. And Jesus told them, I say Jesus because Jesus is everything to me. And if you say the Father, you can still say Jesus. If you say the Son, you can still say Jesus. If you say the Holy Spirit, you can still say Jesus. Amen. So no confusion. Amen. He told them there. March! Go forward! But there's water! I said march! Go! I'm about to drown them! Go! I'm going to split the sea. Dry land you're going to cross. Go! As they went across the dry land... The Bible says that when his children were safe, he let the water flow again. Mm. And the water killed every one that was chasing Amen. after God's Woo! people. Mm. Mm. God is in this place today and he's trying to drown your enemies. He wants to kill everything that's trying to kill you. Yeah. And I want you to know that the enemy is alive and well. You're on his playground. Understand that. We are on his playground. And David, we ain't just here for no reason. We have an assignment. March! Take my children across the promised land. Make heaven crowded. Take them out of here, Jason. You don't have to leave them back here. They don't have to live back here. He said, rise up and lead my people across. And everything that's chasing every one of you, the Bible has promised. He don't have no favorites. He lets it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. My God Almighty, he's a good God. That's right. And he's telling you the same thing that he told the children of Israel. If you will march and keep going forward and quit looking behind you, the enemy always wants you to concentrate on your past. Yes, what you did or what you didn't do. Some of you are so convicted in your spirit from 30 years ago. 10 years ago. Asking God over and over again. Like he's got Alzheimer's or something. <laughs> Forgive me Jesus. Forgive me Jesus. I know what I did then. The Bible says that the, the enemy is the accuser. Come on. Could it be there's a beaver in your brain? Could it be there's a beaver 
in your mind speaking trying to get you to come into agreement come on. see the Bible says that one or two or more gathered and they come in agreement come you don't think that works for the devil too heard a comedian the other day he said that he was um, he said this joke about somebody having a stroke and he used to have this big joke that he did all over the world and they laughed and they ate it up your words are powerful your words will either give life or burn your life down that young man that comedian stood there and he had a revelation because he understood the enemy sending beavers on him and he came into an agreement with the enemy he said, yeah, that's pretty funny. I'm going to make fun of him. I'm going to make fun of a stroke. And then he began to come out there and act like he had a stroke. And he, he began to fake it. And, and all the people ate it up and they began to laugh. But when it, the guy's talking, he's behind the curtain. But when the curtain opens, he's in a wheelchair. He doesn't have a stroke. What you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying to you. You be careful what you put in your mind. That's right. That's right. What you entertain. Mm. What you let around you. Yes. I told you before what you connected to will bless you or curse you. I told Lily the other day, I was talking to her about Joshua. You heard me tell you before. Joshua didn't do a thing wrong. He was God's man. You don't read nowhere in the Bible where, where that man did anything wrong. He killed because God told him to kill. The enemy. Joshua was like Michael the archangel. On earth. You call Joshua, whoa, you in trouble. Nobody's taken prisoner. He destroys everything because he listens to the heartbeat of his father. And it was a funny thing that when he got to the promised land, he stands in front of the Red Sea. God says, all you got to do is cross. And your man is over here. Come on. And he gets right at the line. And God says, hold up. Why? God, I ain't done nothing. I, I, I follow you. I serve you. I pray. I do everything right. He said, son, it ain't nothing that you did. It's who you connected to. He said, all them Israelites that you got behind them, I need you to recircumcise them again. Because what they got on them can't come up in here. Huh? That changed my whole perspective. I said, hold on for a minute. So I can be disqualified for what I'm with now I asked you what kind of beavers are you running with because beavers come to destroy you they came to stop your flow if you got a depression spirit if you got suicide thoughts these are all beavers the beaver that says you're not enough that you'll never make it that you'll always be hooked on this dope he told me that. Come on. He would always wait me until I was at the sickest. I was telling my brother JR the other day, I said, I, I, I can tell you I testify because as a child of God, I want you to understand, even though you get saved, I want you to hear me, hear me well. Even though you're saved and you were blown to the Lord and you swept your house up, cleaned it out. See, Jesus don't do sweeping. See, Jesus does removing. That's right. Come on, that's right. Jesus don't sweep. He removes. So it's time for us to quit sweeping. It's time for us to do some demolition. Come on. That's right. And whatever ain't right, the stopping the flow has got to go. Because I want what God has for me, don't you? And I want what God has for you in your life. I see so many talented people in this place. Gifted. Most of you should have done been dead or in prison Amen. or even in hell. Amen. And your preacher stands with you. But God. Amen. That's right. God showed up and took me across dry land. And he began to try to drown every enemy in my life. But I got so busy that I forgot they had built a bridge across. See, when you get your eyes off of God, the enemy's got his eyes on you. That's right. And he moves in. He'll move in on your thoughts. He'll move in on your feelings. 
Why don't you think a person goes right back to the same sin over and over again? Because there's a beaver stopping your flow. He's hid. I got to talking to God the other day and I said, Wendy, something's wrong. I knew it was too much. I'm going to say something and it don't really matter who, what I'm talking about. It don't matter who, what, when. Amen? Amen. And what I'm going to say, it don't matter if I say the person is a whoever. I'm going to say a whatsoever. Amen? A whosoever called me the other day. This person dear to me. And he was in the bottom of a ditch. The same ditch I came from. The same ditch that God brought me out of. And anytime your pastor, he ain't got much sense sometimes. I'm not the one to run from a giant. You run. People, most people, when they hear a scary sound or, or something like Lily said, I, I get scared. I don't want to look at her baby or think something. Under her. I'm that idiot that sticks his hand under that. <laughs> if I feel there's something outside my house creeping, I'm going to meet it with a bat. Come on. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> and the enemy set me up because he got me busy. And then he began to do things inside of me that I wasn't even right. Holding on to unforgiveness. People I said I forgive. I even convinced myself that I did. Anybody else ever done that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I forgive them, but you go yeah. the other way when they're in Walmart? Come on. <laughs> it's a stronghold, church. It's a stronghold. It's the enemy. See, Lord, what the, the enemy wants you to do is not forgive. Hold on to something. That's what he does to us. And we'll say we forgive, Kenny. We'll say it's over, it's done, I'm done with it. Now, what you're saying is I want to wash my hands of it just like Pilate did. But even Pilate would stand before the king of kings and say, you don't wash your hands of me. I do the washing around here because I am the living water. Amen. And only his water purifies. And only his water flows to God's children. And if that water is not flowing through your body, if that water is not flowing through your life right now, if you feel hindrance, if you feel like you've been trying to receive something from God and it feels like everything is stopping, I know they told us that if every devil is trying to stop you from getting it, then maybe it ain't of God. Or maybe it is of God. You heard both sides, right? right. Oh, if all the devils in hell are coming against me, David, I must be going in the right direction. I've heard that too. I'm not so sure no more. Because Daniel wrecked me the other day. See, if I know there's a trap, the enemy is set, I do my best, Chris, not to go near it. That's right. Yeah. So my pastor don't meet people alone. My pastor, he always stays out. There's a reason. The enemy loves to set you up and wants to put a target on you. God is in this place, church. He's going to remove every stronghold that has held you back stopped you from growing that stunted your growth and right now if you're in this place and you're saying right now I can identify right now some things that are not flowing right in my life can I just see your hands in here right now and say there's some things my water is not flowing the way it should come on it's okay it's like, honesty is where you get freedom they all had to pull over on the side of the road and just pray I'm going to go back to the story and I'm going to finish and I'm going to close. i got a funeral to go do after this. My brother said, I, I can't win this one. And this is a soldier right here calling me. A soldier that you want on the front line with you, Kenny. A soldier that'll have your back when nobody has your back. He'll be a friend when you ain't got a friend. And for the first time, I, I, I come in back in contact, and, and I call heroin, I call fentanyl, Lucifer. Come on. Yeah. Come on. There's demons with a lot of things, but yeah. those two drugs, them not demons, them Lucifer. Yeah. And he 
makes me shake because I knew what he did to me. I knew he took 15 years of my life. I knew he took seven years of me being away from my little girl. I got tired of the enemy taking from me. And I joined the other side. You hear me? So I knew when my brother called me what he was into. And I said, don't you worry. Listen to me real close. I said, I'm on the way. When I hung up that phone. I said, I'll run that devil back to hell where he come from. Come listen, listen, don't give me no clap. I heard a lot of eyes, didn't you, Christina? I heard a lot of eyes, didn't you, Caleb? Because when I got there to face that enemy that I'd faced so many times, I wasn't prayed up. <coughs> I wasn't ready. I jumped in the water with sharks. Because I had a brother down there that I wasn't going to let go down. And when I went in that water, I told every devil and demon there, attack me. Leave him alone. And my God, did they attack. David, I've been in so many gully washers. And God brought me out every time. Mm. Untouched. Mm. But I come out of this one suicidal. I come out of this one wanting to end things. I called Pastor Brown on Sunday or Wednesday, whatever it was. I said, be ready to preach because I didn't know if I was coming back to this church. Mm. And I got along with God and I pulled down the road. I'm talking to you, church. And I pulled over and I got on my knees and I began to talk to God. And I said, God, how is the enemy assessing me? How does he have access? You ever talk to God and he goes quiet? No. So I go back to where I always go is his word. And I go to Daniel and I hear about Daniel in the lion's den. That's what you always read about. But what you don't realize is Daniel got put in the lion's den on his own. Yep. Nobody tells you that, do they? That like they come against him and threw him in the... No, 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 no. They told David, they told Daniel, if you get caught praying, I'm going to put you in a lion's den. Soon as they told Daniel, he went upstairs in his house, he opened both doors and dropped on his knees and he began to lift his hands and he began to pray. And he said, if you got a trap and you didn't bring it, I'll walk in your trap and God will walk me out. He willingly walked into a lion's den. That ain't nobody throwing him in there, Kenny. He walked in it because he knew the same God that delivered him before was the same God that would deliver him again. Yeah. And I walked into a trap knowing what I did. But I had unforgiving, unforgiveness all in my heart. I had an anger. My God, what I had inside of me. I told my wife about a week ago, two weeks ago, I said, there's a ball of energy in me. Listen to me. Men, you really listen. Caleb, you blood with me, so you really listen. Jeremy, I love you better. I, love you. <laughs> I said, there's a ball, Brian. I said, there's a ball of energy like fire inside of me. I said, but I got to make sure I contain it because I can run through a wall with it. You know what I did? I began to pet it. Begin to take pictures with it. I began to just push it down. That ball of energy was hatred, anger. You get a man mad, he'll burn your house down. Mm -hmm. Men, some of y'all women key cars, I'm gonna talk to you. <laughs> That anger's real. And I'd held on to so much anger. Disappointment. And I stuffed it down, David. And I said, I just got to make sure that I don't let this out in the wrong places. And as I, God began to give me these revelations about these dumb beavers, I went down on old dirt road. That's what your pastor does. I got out and I got on my knees and I started calling on Yahshua. I said, 
Casey, come. I started telling him my name again, Jeremy, just in case he forgot. Then I told God, I said, I know you ain't forgot me. Because you said you never leave me. But I feel like you forsake me. I sounded so bipolar. If you'd have been down there, you'd have thought I was crazy. Because every time I said something to God, it was like he put it right. I, you're not crazy, son. You're not, I'm with you. I know you feel like I forsake you, son, but I'm sitting beside you. And I had to keep putting my eyes back on him. But it was a war. I want you to understand spiritual warfare is real. Yeah, that's right. There is a delivery. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Come on, somebody. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there ain't one that he can't save. When I began to pray, and some of y'all may look at me different, you may even go to a different church, but I didn't come to tickle nobody's ears. Come on, come on. And I told Miss Lily yesterday, I said, I'm even ashamed to say it. Because I wasn't proud of it. That's a pride spirit church. Pride is before the fall. And I begin to pray and I begin to seek God. And I begin to ask God, am I really saved? Come on. Mm. You ain't done that before? Yeah. I begin to say, God, am I really saved? Because everything's coming and I don't feel like I feel like you left me. You didn't let him touch Daniel because he was perfect. I said, God, I'm far from it. And you're tearing me to pieces. I said, I'll get you another preacher. It's a wrap. I get it. I quit. And as I went up that road, I just began to just, I said, God, I don't care about a church. I don't care about preaching with you. That's all I want. I don't care if I preach another sermon. I just want to make sure I'm with you. You brought me too far. And every enemy that had attacked me, oppressed me. I began to just worship him anyway. Amen. I began to worship him anyway for who he is, not what he's doing or what he ain't done or what he ain't done yet, but I'm going to worship him for what he's done. Amen. So I began to just pray out and talk to God. And then as I did, I began to get sick. And I began to vomit. And as soon as I did, I felt... <sighs> When I tell you the enemy has no access to me, I mean it. I don't have no hatred in my heart. I don't have no unforgiveness in my heart. I don't have that pain. I don't have that anymore. It's gone. God touch me because when God touches you, he touches you. Amen. Pastor, I thought you were saved. You are a preacher. What happened? Beavers came in. Beavers came in. Sent you to warn me. He was warning you. He was warning all of us. You don't take pictures of them. You don't entertain devils. You cast them out. And I don't care who you are. Every one of you, me included, there's an enemy that hates you. And he wants to get you busy. He wants to deter you away from God. He wants to uproot everything that God has in your life. And he's going to do it by stopping the flow. And a beaver don't stop the flow all at once. It's one stick at a time. Would you just raise your hands to heaven? I want you to pray with me, Brother David. Would you come to me, sir? Every eye closed, every head bowed. I just want you to get along with God right now for just a minute. This is between you.